Power is not something an individual has, but rather something an individual uses. This is one of Michel Foucault's central arguments surrounding the nature of power. Power is not owned, it is exercised. Power is reciprocal and exists in the relationships between people. In this relationship, there are systems that allow one party to use power, authorities, as well as systems which encourage the other party to submit, partisans. These systems can be determined by legislation, education, wealth, hierarchical configurations, imbalances in skill, culture, language or custom. According to Foucault, power and knowledge are inseparable. Each organisation or society has a model of truth, that is, knowledge about what reality is and includes ideas about why the organisation or society exists, how people should interact, who should perform what duties and who should defer to whom. So, what people think of as truth has been developed and reinforced through organisational and societal discourses that influence how power can be exercised and in what circumstances and by whom. Foucault suggested that power can be exercised by shaping an individual's ideas about themselves, especially if the ideas in question suggest that workers should subordinate themselves to managers. In this view, power limits the choices for action by telling people what is thinkable and implicitly what is unthinkable. In other words, what they can and cannot do. Pierre Bourdieu expanded substantially upon the ideas of power in exploring the role of power in the intergenerational reproduction of social systems. As Schwartz notes, Bourdieu argued that custom makes all authority and as such requires partisans to submit to authorities. In other words, power exists with the consent, conscious or unconscious, of the partisan. Furthermore, Social order derives from the habituation to custom and law that custom and law produce by their very existence and persistence. In simpler words, we are driven by habit to obey and submit to the social systems we are socialised into. Bourdieu conceived of power existing in relationships, as did Foucault. However, he went further to identify sources of relational power. Bourdieu identified three ways in which power could be viewed in these relationships power in valued resources, power in specific fields or spheres, and power in legitimation. Swartz summarised these three views of power as follows. Power in valued resources. The first form of power he saw as being embedded in what he described as capitals that could be created, accumulated, exchanged and consumed. These were created through human labour and are considered the objects of social struggle. These consist of the following capitals. Economic, being money and property, cultural, being information, knowledge and educational credentials, social, being acquaintance and friendship networks, and symbolic, being legitimation, authority and prestige. Those who possess these capitals can exchange them for power or influence over those who do not possess them. Power in fields of struggle. Fields are social spaces that are organised around struggles over specific types and combinations of capital. Capitals do not exist in isolation from fields. Bourdieu noted that struggle happens over the distribution of capitals within a field, as well as over what constitutes the most valuable forms of capital in any given field. For example, as Bourdieu pointed out, in academia, individuals struggle over scarce resources such as research grants, positions in prestigious units, teaching grades, titles, awards and publications in top journals because the field of academia values these capitals in the sense that those in possession of these capitals will be granted access to senior positions and further valuable capital. Such systems only work when those who occupy the field agree that these are the most valuable forms of capital. In any given field there will be struggles over competing views of valuable capital. To continue the example from above, there may be struggles over whether teaching scores or publications in top journals are the more valuable form of capital. Usually, the outcomes of such struggles are determined by those at the top of any field, but this is not always the case, since partisans can mobilise through group power and external authorities such as government can also intervene. Power in legitimation. Bourdieu argued that neither brute force nor the possession of material resources are sufficient for the effective exercise of power. 
As Swartz notes, for power to work it needs to be justified and believed to be necessary in order for a social structure to operate. What is considered to be legitimate understandings of the way in which the social world should operate are imposed by dominant groups and deeply internalised by subordinate groups in the form of practical and taken for granted understanding of the way things are. Bourdieu referred to this as symbolic power or the capacity to impose meaning as legitimate. In other words, to organise the perceptions of others about their sense of place and stratified social order and to whom they should naturally defer. As Bourdieu noted, subordinate groups misperceive the real origins and interests of symbolic power when they simply adopt the dominant view and their place in relation to it, perhaps accepting social definitions which may not be in their best interests, and yet they do not challenge these since they appear to be natural and justified.